Straight ahead on KECY Fox 9 News, school districts around the valley are being hit hard by the economic downturn. Budget cuts are deep. How you and your family could be affected. I'm Vanessa Herrera in Yuma, and coming up, it's allergy season. So we're going to have some tips for you and also some reasons why pollen really isn't that bad. The suspect that police say led them through a foot chase through the desert is in court. I'm Ray Smitty with that story coming up. From Yuma and San Luis to El Centro and the Imperial Valley, this is KECY Fox 9 News. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us for KECY Fox 9 News. I'm Anna Chalk. In these economic times, we have to make difficult decisions when it comes to money. That's also true for school districts. And if you live in El Centro and you have kids, then you know how many schools, programs, and services have been affected. Now Imperial Valley reporter Eduardo Santiago has the latest on more budget cuts. Anna, all 11 elementary schools in the district have been significantly impacted. Student services and programs are vanishing off the table. 33 teachers have been laid off in the last two years, along with faculty and staff members, counselors, librarians, and psychologists. The El Centro Elementary School District is getting hit left and right with budget blows. Parents are concerned for the future of their kids. Well, if you want your children or your grandchildren to be successful, I don't think school um, programs, school Anything belongs to school shouldn't be cut. The future of, the, of, of us is the, is the kids. It's supposed to be the they need to learn how to live. If to improve his life, he needs to study. Okay, I think about what they're doing to schools is very bad. We need education with these kids and cutting budgets is not the solution. Superintendent Robert Pletka says he would like to provide more than the state provides for each student. We want our kids to have individual attention for our kids. We want our kids to um, be able, as they at times struggle, um, be able to have a concerned teacher there that can work with them. Even though he knows the district will find a way to deal with the cuts, Pleka says it's an unfortunate reality. We'll do what we need to do. I mean, we will survive this, um, but unfortunately and, and sadly, this generation of kids, um, they're losing out. Superintendent Pleka tells me his district is losing an estimated $2.3 million, which translates to about $370 per student. Eduardo Santiago, KECY Fox 9 News. Well, they're not the only ones that are feeling the economic pinch. Calexico Unified School District is also making bold cuts to fix its finances. Officials have just released the district's solvency plan, which they hope will help them avoid a state takeover. Now, I took a look at the plan today, and here are a few of the ways the district is cutting back. They're planning on reducing the number of certified teaching staff, cutting the rate paid to long-term substitute teachers, getting rid of some cell phone stipends, and continuing attrition. The district now estimates it will be short $3 million in the upcoming fiscal year. However, officials are hoping the solvency plan will allow the district to get a loan that will alleviate cash shortage issues. A known gang member who hid from police and forced people out of their homes made his first appearance in court today. Tonight, KECY Fox 9's Mauricio Marin talks with people about the chaos that rattled their normally quiet community. 23-year-old Aaron Quiros is known as Little Chief. Police say he's a member of Okietown gang who stood before Judge Yolanda Torok in court. Being accused of unlawful flight from law enforcement. Kiros also faces another felony, endangerment, and criminal trespass. Police say Kiros drove recklessly around 32nd Street and Avenue 8E Wednesday night, almost hitting three different cars. That's when police tried to pull him over, but Kiros allegedly drove into desert and started to run. Police say after the suspect fled on foot through the desert, he then jumped over this wall at the Sun Vista RV Resort, where police then had to go trailer to trailer to find the suspect. It was uh, quite a bit of commotion, a lot of police activity. Officers set up a perimeter around the trailer park with sheriffs and border patrol agents helping search for Quitos, even having to temporarily evacuate some people from their homes. Authorities finally found Quitos hiding in a shed. They booked him on two outstanding felony arrest warrants for DUI and probation violation charges. A normally calm place to live, Roberto Gallego says this is the first time 
Something like this has ever happened while living at Sun Vista RV Resort. We never have any type of fears of uh, any type of intrusions, break-ins or anything like that. So we're basically pretty safe. In Yuma, I'm Mauricio Marin, KCY Fox 9 News. Police say this isn't the first time Kiddos hid from police. Last month, police attempted to serve a search warrant, but he refused to come out and barricaded himself inside his home. Well, it's official tonight. The U.S. Department of Justice approved Yuma County's redistricting plan. Every 10 years, the boundaries for the five supervisor district must be reviewed based on the latest census numbers. Precinct lines must also be redrawn to meet requirements of the Voting Rights Act. The county's redistricting commission worked on the plan for six months and super, supervisors approved it last October. Now, if you want to see whether you've ended up in a new district, you can check out the plan. It's in the Yuma County's website. Security at Naval Air Facility El Centro will be, be, excuse me, will be put to the test tomorrow. Guards will check IDs for anyone 16 years or older, and it's all part of a nationwide exercise called Solid Curtain Citadel Shield. All facilities in El Centro will be open during the test, and base operations will continue as normal, but there could be delays getting on the base, and there will be changes in parking. A 32-hour siege ends in a hail of 300 bullets. The French authorities are giving some dramatic details about the raid that led to the death of a self-described Al-Qaeda militant. Dan Rivers is in Toulouse, where it all ended today for Mohamed Mara. After 32 hours, they went in. At 11.30 a.m., the silence was shattered by dozens of shots as police finally stormed the apartment where Mohamed Mera was hiding. The shootout with the self-styled Al-Qaeda devotee didn't last long. The killer came out shooting most violently. The gunshots, there were many of them very intense, and a raid specialist who was an expert in this said he had never seen such a violent reaction. They tried to protect themselves, and in the end, Mohamed Mera jumped out of the window, a gun in his hand, while still shooting. He was found dead on the ground. As masked officers from France's elite raid police unit returned to barracks, they were congratulated, but two weren't here for the handshake. Those officers were injured in the crossfire as Mera fought to the death with his considerable arsenal of weapons inside this apartment block. He was wearing a bulletproof vest. Elements for Molotov cocktails, rags and bottles were found on his balcony. In the apartment we found three empty magazines for automatic pistols of 143 caliber, a pot of ammunition of various calibers. We found next to his body a Colt 45 with two bullets remaining and a bag with another magazine. We estimate in reality he fired some 30 bullets at police who were moving through his apartment. The killing spree linked to Mera has gripped the world for the last week. This video, the only image of the gunman to have emerged so far, shows him showing off to friends in a BMW. He'd been convicted of motoring offences just two weeks before his targeted killing campaign began. It's now emerged that Mera was on a no-fly list, according to one U.S. intelligence source, because of his time spent in an Al-Qaeda training camp. It will be a bitter disappointment to the French authorities that they didn't manage to take him alive. He could have provided valuable intelligence, but it was clear that he was determined to die with a gun in his hand. The French president, Nicolas Sarkozy, fighting for re-election in a month, confirmed it was over. L'auteur des assassinats, the person who carried out the ignoble in Toulouse, has been killed and can no longer do any harm. And for the victims, the families, the soldiers, their thoughts are all in my mind. And I'd like to express the condolences of the National Assembly. But there will be difficult questions about how Mera managed to get so many weapons in a country where gun control is tight. A group linked to Al-Qaeda claimed Mera's killings, prompting many to wonder if he really was a lone wolf or if he had accomplices. Dan Rivers, CNN, Toulouse. Funeral services are set for former San Luis Police Sergeant Victor Martinez. Martinez died Sunday night after a long fight with cancer. He had served the department since 1989, and at the time of his death, Martinez was working for the Department of Homeland Security as an investigator. The 37-year-old leaves behind a wife and three children. 
A viewing will be held on Friday from 5 p.m. to midnight at the San Luis Cultural Center, and then funeral services will be held Saturday at 9 in the morning at San Luis High School. This will be followed by a police procession that will end at Desert Lawn Memorial Park in Yuma. In the Phoenix area, traffic intersections are under the watchful eye of cameras, but that didn't stop one critic of the system from running a red light. This video shows Arizona State Senator Frank Antonori in Scottsdale rolling through the intersection at about 19 miles an hour. Antonori is sponsoring a bill that would redefine the word intersection and shake up the red light camera system. Currently, the law requires drivers to stop before the crosswalk, but under Antonori's proposal, if you're already past the crosswalk when the light turns red, you're in the clear. Antonori was ticketed for running that red light. Well, if you have a runny nose and watery eyes, you're definitely not alone. Patients have been lining up at doctor's offices to try and find some relief for their allergies. KCY Fox 9's Vanessa Herrera is here to tell us what the doctor recommends. Vanessa. Anna, pollen is just part of spring and there's no way to avoid it. I spoke to a local allergist who's been practicing for 30 years and he admits this is a particularly bad allergy season. I've taken, you name it, I've taken it. According to allergist Hosea Brown, record pollen counts are being reported all over the U.S. Patients are suffering more severely, you know, this time of year. So this time lots of people are having lots of trouble. It bothers most of us on a regular basis, so it's hard to appreciate its purpose. Pollen is basically how plants reproduce. There's a ton of different ways that pollen gets moved around. One of the ways is by wind. You also have animal pollination. Bielmir simply explains exactly how pollination works and why we should appreciate it. We're going to pretend that my hand is a flower. The flower is, uh, is pollinated and down here is where your fruit or your vegetable is going to be. So if you like tomatoes or um, cucumbers or oranges or any of those delicious things, without that flower being, being pollinated by pollen being moved around from flower to flower, we wouldn't have any of those delicious foods that we like to eat. For allergy sufferers, Hosea recommends over-the-counter antihistamines. Of course, there are a percentage of the patients whose allergies are so severe that that doesn't work. If those don't work, see your regular doctor. They told me you better go see a specialist because we can't help you. <laughs> and that is what brings her here today. These pin pricks are allergens being injected into her skin to see exactly what she's allergic to. One of the treatments, if all other has failed, okay. is allergy desensitization or allergy injections. So when you're stuffed up, feel like you can't breathe and have that annoying cough, remember. People say that every third bite you should thank a pollinator, like a, a bee or, or a, some type of an insect, because basically every third bite that we take happens because of pollination. I also asked Brown if there were any holistic ways to help allergies, and he recommended staying inside if you're allergic to plants or other outdoor particles, but he said that with the beautiful weather here in Yuma, allergies are not easy to avoid. For KECY Fox 9 News, I'm Vanessa Herrera. Anna, back to you. Vanessa, thank you. That's really good information. The Yuma County Health Services District wants pregnant women and their babies to get off to a healthy start. And that's why the agency is offering free prenatal classes at Yuma County Libraries. Future fathers and other supporters are encouraged to attend. The classes focus on things like nutrition, reducing stress, breastfeeding, and infant care. A tour of the labor and delivery unit is also part of the class, as well as car, street in, car seat instructions. The classes are offered in both English and Spanish and alternate dates and times and locations. So for more information on that, make sure you call the number on your screen at 317-4540. Local businesses getting advice on keeping their doors open during this economic downturn, how they're dealing with tough decisions while they tough it out. Good evening, I'm weather forecast with Marlene Chavis. Yesterday we actually hit some normal heat. Now the high was 80 degrees and that's the average for this time of the year. Talking about not even getting close to that record of 97 degrees, but we are feeling some heat out there as those temperatures do get close to 90 degrees. Now we will have a breezy Friday in the works as the cold front moves through. Now a second one will bring showers, a chance of Monday showers for the second week of spring. And cooler days are ahead of us as the area of low pressure starts to move on out. More coming up.